Welcome to the ultimate fall book video. If we haven't met before, I'm Paulina and fall is my all-time favorite season. I am so excited. I cannot contain my excitement. I'm just thrilled. I am thrilled to be in a season of fall. What are we going to do in this video? We're going to read some books together, some fall books. I'm going to do a huge fall book haul. I need to reorganize my bookshelves because it's, it's not giving right now and I need it to give. So to start, I'm going to talk about the book I'm currently reading for fall and this is the book we're going to read together. It is Kristen Hanna's The Great Alone and Destiny Sidwell actually inspired me to read this book. She's on her Kristen Hanna kick so of course now I'm on my Kristen Hanna kick. That is how the book community works. I'm currently 170 pages in and this book is truly phenomenal. It feels like a five-star read for me. It is totally up my alley. It's checking all the boxes for a perfect fall read. This is about a family that moves to a very rural part of Alaska and they decide to homestead. They decide to live off of they list they decide to live off of the grid and do things their own way. So this family there is a war a Vietnam War veteran, the mother, and the young the 13-year-old daughter Lenny Ernt, who is the war veteran, came back changed from Vietnam, as many war veterans did. He's become a violent man who makes decisions on impulse. His wife Cora loves him so dearly and is ready to do anything for this man, which is why she lets him drag them up to Alaska. Well, the one thing people keep telling them in Alaska... There's a... Alright, I think my camera lens was dirty this entire time, so... Oh well. One thing people in this small community in Alaska tell them is that you can make one mistake and the second one will kill you. And so the girls are now living with this motto in their head but quickly start to realize that what on the outside isn't as dangerous as what is in the inside of their home. This is truly such... I, I know this is going to ruin me. I know I'm going to be crying my eyes out in the end and that is honestly exactly what I'm looking for. It's set in the winter of Alaska. It's not winter yet but it's it's that kind of cozy feeling. I do think this will be fun to read in the winter actually now that I'm thinking about that but let's get reading. Now that I've read Kristen Hannah's The Grey Alone, let's talk about it because it's been two weeks since I read this book, maybe more. It might have been a month. I have completely lost track of time. Since reading this, I could not get it out of my mind. I fall asleep thinking about this book every single night. It has left that big of an imprint on me. I still can't decide if I'm giving it a 4.5 stars or a 5 stars, which to me feels like maybe I should give it a 5 stars purely for the fact that I haven't stopped thinking about it, but the most phenomenal part about this book and just Kristen Hanna's writing is how vividly I was able to picture Alaska in my head. The way everything is depicted is absolutely beautiful. I grew up in a northern small town in Alberta so I do have I have had my fair shares of winter. I obviously wasn't as remote as Alaska like I obviously don't exactly know how it's like but I know a little bit of how it's like and I felt like she very accurately depicted what life is like in the north. The amount of things that happen in this book you're halfway through something crazy happens and you're like well this couldn't have been the the crazy part of the book because I still have half of the book left and then you get to a good resolution and you're like huh that's weird I still have half of the book left and so you get really concerned for your sanity and which I say you should be 
and the ending destroyed me. I cried, pictures of me crying. It really just tugged and knife and the things that happened to Lenny, the things she experiences. Poor girl, the poor girl. I highly recommend you read it. It feels very fall, fall winter. I like it doesn't feel like a summer read. I highly recommend this book. Really enjoyed it. That's with their drinkies. So there's a dirty soda truck that opened up in Edmonton. That's unfortunately not woman owned. <laughs> so we did go and try it. I got the Go Mango. It's Dr. Pepper, mango puree, and other fun stuff that I forget. And this is the tea bell. It has raspberry puree. It's not the best, I'm Coconut not gonna lie. Right? Or something like that. But now we're going to chapters. Honestly, I think we're gonna read this book and eat it up actually as a friend group. I think the friend group's gonna like this book. Yeah. Yeah. It's like very up our street. Oh, it's this one's a series. Yes, it is a series. She was named one of Time Magazine's influential people of the year. I love this. It gives you a list of characters. I need that. I need, I need that in the game of Should I get it? Yeah. We can buddy read it. Can we please? You don't have to wait for me. You can just Okay, okay, okay. We can just read okay, it okay. together. <laughs> Time for a massive book haul. I honestly went a little crazy in September and bought a lot of books. And I wish I could say actually just in September because I have already ordered another package and it's October. But you know what? That's besides the point. We're gonna talk about the books I bought because I feel like all of them are fall-esque, meaning books you would read in the fall. And I've got my coffee i recently got these espresso cups because they had a deal going on and i love them i think they're just so cute i just think about waking up in the morning and having my coffee in these cups amazing recently i bought my brilliant friend amazing book this is a was it the new york times named this the number one book in the 21st century i think it was them so very promising book i definitely feel very smart <laughs> reading this it feels like it reads like a classic, except it's not a classic, so I definitely see this becoming a classic after our lifetimes. And it's essentially, as it sounds like, it's about a friendship that starts at a very young age and just, it's their friendship as time moves on. And I think those are the best books. Books about friendship, I think, is my favorite genre of book. <sighs> Okay, so this next book I'm a little nervous about. I got Stephen King's 112263, and this is about the and this is about a time traveler who goes back in time to try to stop the Kennedy assassination. It's very intimidating, and this is going to be my very first Stephen King book, and I cannot wait to read it. I have heard numerous book talkers talk booktubers talk about how much they enjoyed this book so when i saw it at indigo i just had to grab it and see what it's about i'm very intimidated because this is how many pages is this oh there's a recipe in the back it's 850 pages that's crazy and it's it's so big i'm so intimidated but equally just as excited okay then I've got Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow. So I've read this book already. It is one of my all time favorite books. And I never owned a copy because I actually listened to it as an audiobook. And one day I hope to reread this, put some annotations in. If you haven't read this book, I urge you, please read it. If you take away anything from this video, read this book. It will not do a disservice to you. I have yet to meet someone I recommend this to and they don't like it. see what I mean anyway again this book is about friendship 
and life and love. And this spans the entire life of a boy named Sam. Is it? This was a while ago. Who's the main character? It spans the entire almost the entire life of a boy named Sam and a girl named Sadie who are really close friends and end up creating a video game company and it's just so beautiful the things that they go over the topics they go over in this book you don't anticipate they're gonna go over it it is a lifetime of situations and it's shocking I cried you will cry and I hope you enjoy it because you have to read it next thing I bought I forgot I like rearrange this. I bought this four box set of Kristen Hanna because I am in my Kristen Hanna era and this box contains The Great Alone which I have just read in this video, The Nightingale, Night Road, and Fly Away. And Fly Away is actually the sequel to Firefly Lane and this book didn't have Firefly Lane. I think it's Fly Away actually. Yeah. So I, I did go to Indigo and pick up Firefly Lane, which is already a Netflix show. I did not know it was, and it's been a Netflix show for a while, I believe. Anyway, I'm not going to go into depth what this book, each of these books is about because I honestly don't know myself. Aside from The Nightingale is a historic retelling of World War II, not a historic retelling, a historical fiction place during France in World War II. The Great Alone, I already read in this book, so you guys should know what it's about, and it was phenomenal. Kristen Hanna collection has begun, and I cannot wait to read more of her books. A few weeks ago, Indigo had this event where they were giving out 10,000 free books across Canada, which if you do the math, is not a lot of books per Indigo location. So the Indigo location closest to me had 50 books, and like 200 people lined up but the book I was hoping to get was Kite Runner by Khalid I will butcher this Khalid Hosseini you get the point which is a Heather's Pig very well renowned very popular since I couldn't get my hands on that I decided to get A Thousand Splendid Sons which is one of my best friends favorite books so I feel I, I'm excited to read this what it is about I actually don't know but it's, I know it is a very heartfelt piece about war in the Middle East. Wow, this book has a lot of quotes written by people. I bought Little Woman because I'm in my classics era. I've re-entered it recently. Watch, watch my classics video if you guys want to see me re-enter this, re-enter my classics era. But Little Woman is on the list to read. Uh, everyone loves it. And, and in... Um, the book I'm currently reading, which is My Brilliant Friend, they actually, the girls, talk about reading Little Woman in the very beginning, which made me want to read Little Woman even more. Then I read The Cartographer, and I saw this on Book Outlet when I was placing a big order, and it just seemed very... I can't, I can't lie. I was intrigued by the cover. It looked really fun. But it's about a, a girl... Someone's coming to my house. Okay, so The Cartographers is about... A girl who's a cartographer who is working for her father who is, you guessed it, also a cartographer. Her dad fires her because she made a pretty big mess up in uh, a map. Then after a little bit, her dad ends up dead. And so she goes to investigate, uh, goes back to his shop and finds a map um, that proves to be extremely interesting and makes her believe that her father was in danger. It feels very october if I don't see so myself. Last book that I have purchased was The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath and I bought this purely because they mentioned this book multiple times in Girl More Girls and I'm going to be doing a reading like Rory Gilmore for a week and this book will be on the list to read. So The Bell Jar is a modern classic and it is supposed to be very depressing so I'm a little worried for me reading this because I'm going to be reading this right around midterm season and the vibes are already low during midterm season but we are gonna make them lower because trial and tribulations this is how we become better people and then I can say that I have read the bell jar what it is about it's about an American girl who goes through a mental breakdown and then has like a revelation as I think many of us do we go through mental breakdowns and and I get revelations yeah So something I've been planning to do for a while is rearrange my bookshelves. I have these two big ones and then the rest of my books are just kind of all over my room, all over my house. And these two bookshelves are no longer sufficient enough to hold on my, all my books. So eventually 
I do need to get a third one. And that will be a different video. And I don't see that happening in the immediate future because, you know, maybe it should be my immediate future. Maybe I'll do that during reading week. So we'll see. But third bookshelf incoming. Anyway, I really wanted to reorganize my shelves because when I did initially put these up, and do my initial organization. I was really into romance books that is on this shelf here and right now I am more in my literary fiction and classics era so I do want to organize my shelves to reflect that more as well. I feel like it's so dark up here and on the shelf right behind me. I want to move it around so that it just looks more fun and less depressing to look at. And I also have a lot of new books that I need to make room for on the shelves so I think I'm going to be getting rid of certain books. thought I was recording and then my camera just shut off but anyway I think I finished for now I'm not gonna lie I'm not obsessed with it I just I I think I just need the third bookshelf because not everything fit I got rid of books that like a I did I read and didn't like and books I'm probably not gonna read literally everything is filled and in some parts we've got some like books on the top there like that which I would like to avoid and some of some of the shelves like this one here like they're squished in here oh and these ones too oh my gosh don't fall on me I want to keep my genres more separate but my so my romance is here and then I have like romance slash fantasy duologies slash thrillers on one shelf so a very colorful variety of books so here i've got literary fiction i'm pretty happy with the shelf i think for now i do think i would want to rearrange these books then up here I have my book of the month books some other hardbacks that are just too obnoxiously big to be with the paperbacks and then some just darker put you up there some darker covers and some other literary fictions and then over there I've got like again this honestly this shelf has no um it's just random actually so I'm gonna call that assorted and then I have like fantasy um for like three shelves down essentially some mismatched books here I did banish Bridgerton down there because honestly I'm gonna be so real I am I read the first book I am probably not gonna read the rest of it I just like don't have the heart to throw them out because they look so pretty and I do have so many of them. Not throw them out and donate, but eventually they're probably going to get donated. Stay tuned for when I get another shelf and we, we will be reorganizing again. I think this is it for this ultimate fall reading vlog, reading video. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it yet. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. I hope you guys liked it and let's chat next time.